Welcome back guys, or if you're new to my channel, this is Automotive Anonymous, and that's the 2025 Mazda CX-50 Turbo. And that's the Mazda CX-30 Turbo. And no, these are not direct competitors. The CX-30 is a subcompact, and the 50 is a regular compact. But a lot of you guys do cross shop these. They are both very high selling vehicles for Mazda. They share the same powertrain, while the 30 is the smallest with the turbo engine, and the 50 is the largest that has the same two and a half liter turbo engine. I thought that this would be a fun side-by-side -side comparison. In case you guys are wondering, which one should you buy? Do you need the extra storage and the space that the CX-50 has? Do you love its wide stance? Or do you love the nimbleness and the added sportiness that comes with the slightly smaller CX-30? There's a lot that these have in common. They do share the same powertrain and a lot of the same Mazda DNA, but there's actually some substantial differences. So today, there's a lot to get through in this video. So let's get right into it. If you get anything out of this video today, please consider liking my video. Comment your thoughts and opinions below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And huge thanks to Giddy Motor for letting me borrow these vehicles for the day. They sell below MSRP. They ship all over the country. Reference this video and you'll get a hefty discount. And with that said, let's dive right into this side-by-side -side comparison. So in typical fashion for this style of review, you can expect to see everything from the front to the back to the interior of the vehicle and a lot of other things in between. But before we really get into it, I do want to mention, with these being the turbo 2.5 liter 6-speed automatic transmission vehicle options that Mazda offers, as well as the CX-5, which I just finished comparing to this in a separate video, I actually am going to take all three of these out. We're going to do some 0-60 to 60 testing, both off of idle in sport mode and with a brake rev launch. And we're going to see how much faster, or what we assume the CX-30 being the lightest one, is going to be faster than the heavier 5 and then the most heavy, the 50. So stay tuned for that video, or maybe it's already out. Search the channel if you're interested. Anyways, both of these are pretty well sized, but these classes of vehicle, what Mazda offers is smaller than a lot of the other vehicles, not necessarily completely from the exterior dimensions, but the back seats and the rear. If we are just being honest, let's start with the CX-50. It is a whole foot wider than it is tall. It's six and a quarter feet wide, five and a quarter feet tall, it's about 15.4 feet long, so it's only about a half foot longer than the CX-30. And with the CX-30 behind this vehicle right now on camera, you can almost not even see that the CX-30 is there. Meanwhile, the CX-30, it's five feet tall, six feet wide, so it's actually only about a quarter foot smaller in each of those dimensions, while being about a half foot shorter overall at about 14.8, 14.9-ish feet. These weigh, depending on the powertrain, if it has the turbo or not, and how many luxurious features, 3,000 pounds to 3,300 pounds. And it's not very often these days you find a crossover that weighs that little, which really adds to why these are so incredibly fun to drive. In fact, they're so fun to drive that Ferrari spent millions of dollars making their own version of the Mazda CX-30. Kind of interesting. Anyways, these can tow 1,500 pounds or 2,000 pounds if it is turboed. This CX-50 actually already has a hitch installed, so a non-turbo can tow about 2,000 pounds, or a turboed can tow about 3,500 pounds. I've driven plenty of these with and without the turbo engine. In general, the turbos seem to do 0 to 60 about 3 seconds faster than the unturboed ones. But you're welcome to find individual reviews or other comparisons if you want to actually watch the drag racing or the acceleration testing. And then they both have a lot of other interesting things in common. The CX-50 has 8.6 inches of ground clearance and an off-road mode when you are in this upper trim level. The CX-30 has 6.9 inches of ground clearance, and it doesn't have an off-road mode. It only has normal driving or sport. So this is definitely a little bit more focused on-road, whereas the CX-50 with its wider stance is more focused off-road. It also has a Meridian Edition, which is pretty cool. Basically, it just comes with some all-terrain tires and some other features that add it. Its ability to be slightly more off-road capable. But if we do want to look under the hood, both of these have the same powertrain today, and you'll notice that it might be substantially less tight in the 50 compared to the 30, but honestly, at only about three inches wider overall vehicle dimensions, it's not gonna be that much noticeable and not a reason to pick one or the other based off of maintenance ease. So this engine is really interesting. With the turbo on 87 octane, it makes 227 horsepower and 310 torque, which is pretty stout, especially the torque figure. And then when you put 91 octane, it bumps it up to, depending on which model that engine is in, 250 to 256 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. 
The turbo is on the back and it's easier to see on the 50 being a slightly larger engine bay than on the five, but you have a computer, you have the washer reservoir, you have the brake fluid reservoir, the battery, the fuse box, the filter. It is transversely mounted. So the four cylinders go like this. The induction is on this side. The exhaust is obviously right there with the turbo in the back. And then the serpentine belt and the alternator are right here. So it is gonna be a little bit tighter of a fit, but thankfully these engines, they're really reliable. When you go turbo Mazda, you don't have to deal with cylinder deactivation like some of the non-turbo models have. And they also don't have I start stop, which is just when you come to a stop, the vehicle shuts off and it gets more engine cycles, which I don't necessarily know is gonna help with long-term reliability. But anyways, back here with the CX-30, you can see the engine just sits up slightly higher, but everything otherwise looks very similar. And you still have a pretty good view of the turbo back there. Both of these being the turbo models, they have the power lift gate, but if you're wondering how much they cost, the CX-30 is actually not that expensive. MSRP on the base trim level, which there's eight trim levels, starts at about $25,000. The way this one is configured being basically the highest trim level you can have, just below the premium plus, it's gonna be in the upper 30s. Meanwhile, the CX-50, this starts at $30,000 and it can get to the low mid 40s. So the CX-30 definitely is a few thousand dollars cheaper but the way they're sitting right now, this one is several thousand dollars cheaper than this one. And if I push the power liftgate button at the same time, let's see which one activates first and which one opens up first. CX-30 didn't register with the first beep, but there it goes. So since the CX-50 is the winner, let's start with this one. Back here, you have about 31 cubic feet of room. And when you drop the seats, which you have these fancy handles to do so, you get 56 cubic feet. So that is about 18 feet less than something like a Forester or an Outback, but it still is pretty good. The seats lay almost flat. You have quite a bit of loading floor right here, a very narrow bumper, so it's easy to lift and to put stuff into here. You have an LED light. You have a place for a privacy shade to connect. You have some bag clips, which are actually really handy if you take this to the grocery store. You have a 12 volt right there, some storage behind the wheel wells, some of the extra options that this one came with. And then under here, you should have the Bose speaker and the spare tire. It is just a temporary spare, not a full-size spare, but the Bose system sounds pretty cool. And then you have lock and lower, or just lower. You can also set the height on these vehicles, which is pretty cool. And then over here, the CX-30 is a little bit more plain Jane, even on this upper $30,000 model. You still have an LED light. It looks like you technically could put a very small privacy shade, but back here you only have 20 cubic feet of room compared to 31 cubic feet of room. And when you drop the seats, which there aren't handles to do so, but it's, you know, a short enough vehicle that you can easily just reach across, you have about 45 cubic feet. So 11 cubic feet less with the seats down than in this one. So not necessarily as much difference in size as you guys might have expected. Though width of the CX-50 definitely helps a little bit for loading some stuff. And then under here, it's basically the same idea. You have the spare tire and the Bose speaker, and you might think that that's gonna cause rattling around. It actually doesn't, it's integrated really well. And then you also have the lock and lower or just the lower and you can set it as well. As we move on to the interior, it's worth mentioning that the gas door is located on the driver's side for both of these vehicles, which I really appreciate. And then in the system, it is set to lock after a certain amount of time, but you can up the time and make it lock right away so that the bums can't attempt to siphon any of your fuel both of these can take 87 octane, but it is that reduced power level, or you can put 91 in, and MPG's probably gonna be pretty similar as long as you're keeping your foot out of it. But the CX-30 only has a 12.7 gallon tank, which is not very large. This one specifically is rated for 22 city, 30 on the highway, so it's max road trip and range is around 420 miles. And the CX-50 has a 15.9 gallon tank, so 3.2 more gallons. And surprisingly, it's rated better in the city, 23, but only 29 on the highway, so it ultimately equals out. And then where these are both the turbo models, this one specifically is the premium plus. It has the biggest wheel and tire that you can get on one of these. It's a 20 inch wheel and a Eagle touring tire. And then it's a 245, 45, 20. And the tread seems to be about nine to 10, 30 seconds. Meanwhile, this one is a little bit smaller, especially in the width department. It's only a 215, which is a very small tire, but it's a 215.55 with an 18 inch wheel. And its tread is about eight to nine 30 seconds on this Terenza tire. So you can get both of these with a 17 inch wheel 
So it's kind of crazy that the CX-50 has a three inch diameter difference from their largest to their smallest wheel. But anyways, let's come around to the interior of the CX-30. And I hope you guys can excuse the dirt on the paint. Most of the time you guys see your vehicles, they're not gonna be squeaky, shiny, clean. Sometimes when I do side-by-side -side comparisons, I don't worry so much about the cleanliness of the exterior just because that's only gonna be shown that clean a few times. And in all my individual reviews, I try to have the vehicles cleaned up first. But this is what dirty crystal metallic red looks like. Soul red, it's still a really nice color and I like it a lot. As black mirrors, it has the 360 degree camera. In fact, both of these have the 360 degree camera. It also has the turn signal in the mirror, blind spot monitoring, which is standard, and then proximity key features if you leave the key in your pocket. Otherwise, this is the door panel, all black materials, Bose is listed up here for the speakers. Everything is soft touch, probably gonna age really well. Very nice higher end or higher quality feeling leathers. You also have this illumination in the CX-30. Feels kind of like a piece of plastic though. Anyways, the mats are not yet installed. You have the hood release, you have a storage pocket, you have memory seats, you have some extra options on your 360 degree camera, tilt and telescope wheel, lighting stock, paddle shifters for the six speed and your heated leather wrapped wheel. This is also a heated leather wrapped seat. And then you have a small sunroof up top. It has lumbar support, which I really like. And both of these vehicles have a payload capacity per the door jam sticker of 850 pounds, which is basically typical for all Mazdas. Fires right up, has physical gauges on the periphery and a digital one on the center. You can go through info and look at a few bits of information. You also have the heads up display right there. You can kind of see the box and the reflection on the windshield of it. Otherwise the horn, it's pretty nice. The touchscreen can maybe be turned on to be a touchscreen. Otherwise it's controlled through the physical dial. You have HVAC, heating, heated seats, heating, steering wheel, all those features right there. You have your charger right there. It's slanted down, no plugins or anything. You have some cup holders right here. Here's your 360 degree camera. Even the front wheels have a trajectory line. The clarity is fantastic. I really like this system. Otherwise, you can go into sport mode or just off, like I mentioned earlier, auto vehicle hold and parking brake right there. Scrolly dial, you have navigation, the back button, the music, the home, whatever you want to set up with Star. You also can push this button and turn off the screen if you just want to have that on. But thankfully, it's out of your line of sight for most people, and it's not a distraction. So this system is probably going to age a lot better than most other vehicles. Trying to be the latest and the greatest with their technology, which usually does not last very long. This is a sliding armrest, but what's interesting is the size of this. When I have the rear seats down, you might not actually be able to open up your sliding center console because it gets stuck in the back right there. So I'll overlay some footage of what that looks like. You have some plugins and an adequate amount of storage. But otherwise, it's nice and comfortable, and I like that you can kind of conceal what's hidden underneath in the front. And then up here, you have a sunglass holder. You have a physical shade for your power moonroof, which is controlled through here. There's also LED lighting. This one has garage door openers. It doesn't slide the sun visor, but you do have an extension piece. And then you have a little slide right here with an LED light up top. But anyways, let's hop out of this and into the front of the CX-50. To come around to the front of the CX-50, you'll notice it also has the very identical heads up display. It has a turn signal in the mirror, 360 degree cameras, of course, blind spot monitoring on the inside. And then you sell proximity key features, but just like the CX-30, they're kind of the cleaner tucked away design. Personally, I actually like the old school push button that's on the CX-5. You can see when you lock it, it closes and actually activates pretty quick. So if we come into here, the door panel, it looks very similar to the CX-30. You also have the baseball style stitching. You have a grab handle. You have cup holders, both speakers advertised, but they're up here on the, the very front by the eight pillar. And then you have nothing on the door sill, despite this being a more expensive vehicle. You have rubberized pedals. You have the hood release. You have memory seats. All of your options are filled out and you have iStop right there. Otherwise you have power heated ventilated seats with more baseball style stitching. And then you have a big pano moonroof up top. So when we hop inside of the CX-50 and we fire it right up, it roars to life. The digital display in the center is pretty much the same as on the other vehicle. And then you can go through the center with this button right here, the info on the steering wheel. This one also has the leather wrapped heated features and ventilated seats and paddle shifters to control it. Otherwise you have a wireless charger, you have a 12 volt, you have cup holders right there. The 360 degree camera, basically the same software as on 
the CX-30 trajectory lines, even for the front wheels, is very cool. And then you have all the same Mazda controls right here. This, I do not like. It's the French door. It's kind of interesting. The actual center console is not huge. You have a wireless charger right there. But I don't understand why they did this. You can't just really very easily open up one side, and you have to reach your arm really high over that to get in. So it's not my favorite, but it is okay. Otherwise, visibility in both of these is good. The windows are slightly bigger on this than they are in the slightly shorter CX-30, but neither of them have the class-leading windows that you might desire if you only care about visibility. Otherwise, you have garage door openers, you have LED lighting, you have your shade, you have your sunglass holder right here, you have your power mooner if you can slide the front and just leave the back open. It's also electronically controlled. And when you honk the horn, it's high pitched. It sounds basically like all other Mazdas. So with that said, let's turn this off and hop in the back of the CX-30. I'll be honest with you guys, I actually really like Mazdas. I think overall they are a very good value for the reliability, the sportiness, and all the creature comforts you get. But my least favorite part about driving them and reviewing them is this. It's the back. Of course the door opens up quite large, so it is easier to get into this than some other vehicles. All black materials on this one, so kind of sad, depressing colors. But overall, they're nice colors. I just wish interiors weren't so dark, especially when the windows on this are already tinted and not huge to begin with. Otherwise, you can see that the back seat barely folds down. You do have a really nice CX-30 on the door sill, and the back seats on this do not recline, unfortunately. But you have child safety tethers right there, but it is going to be maybe kind of hard to fit a car seat back there unless you're sitting pretty far forward, because even at 5 foot 11, you guys can see there's not a ton of room in front of my knees. Ventilation right here. And this is where you save a little bit of the money compared to the CX-50. There's no heated seats. There's nothing fancy back here. Just a nice, sturdy, leather-wrapped armrest. And then my spiky hair rubs the ceiling. But at least I have LED lighting. I could get a little bit more natural light if this shade was open. And overall, you know, it's doable. I don't want to go on a road trip across the country, but I could be in here for a couple hours if I needed to be. So with that said, let's hop in the back of the CX-50 and see if that's much better. I actually really like the wide rear fenders of the CX-50. It makes it more distinguishable between a lot of the other jelly bean shaped SUVs on the road. Just the other day, I drove another Ram TRX, which has crazy wide fenders, and I just love that this kind of resembles that. So even though you might need a family SUV, at least you can get a sportier, really good looking one. This is actually one of the best looking crossovers, and most people's opinion of what's currently on the market because way too many automakers have just kind of copied each other's design and their game plan, and more of them need wide fenders. I guess until that isn't cool anymore, but for now, it is very cool. Otherwise, the door panel is nice. It's all black materials. The doors, you can see, open up just as wide, if not wider, than the CX-30, and it does feel like a longer door. Otherwise, you can see there's a tiny bit more room where the seat is folded down, and you, of course, have all the floorboard room, but it's not huge. It should recline. Let's test that theory. Ooh, I guess it's actually that must already be the. Yeah, I guess maybe that's not reclining because I'm not able to get it up straight. So that's interesting. Anyways, let's hop inside. This, like the CX30, it's all black materials, but at least the windows are slightly bigger and you have more light coming from the roof. So it doesn't feel as claustrophobic in here, but it still is super comfortable. It's really nice to sit back here. You have the heated seats, ventilation, and plugins all throughout. Nice, sturdy, very similar cup holder and armrest. And overall, my spiky hair still rubs right here on this part of the ceiling, but it's a much nicer place to be. So this being a compact crossover versus a subcompact crossover is going to be very appreciated by the full-size adults that you drive around in the back seat. Anyways, guys, these are my thoughts. These are my opinions with this side-by-side -side comparison review. So hopefully, objectively, at least seeing these side by side, that is informative and informational for you guys. And if you are deciding which one of these to go with, again, I did do a side by side of this next to the five and specs dimensions are similar, but they're all slightly different because Mazda likes to give you options. It is interesting that they have two compact crossovers. They have two vehicles in the same class, basically, although they do it kind of different. I don't want to say that this is the his and the CX-5 is the hers, but there definitely is a variety that you can choose from, and they both look really good. I personally like the CX-50 from an appearance perspective the most, but honestly, I might like the CX-5 the most. It drives just as well, just as sporty, but it just feels like it's not, you know, you're not suffering from the lower roofline. 
you're not suffering from of the more extreme off-road and on-road sportiness focus that this has. Meanwhile, the CX-30, that's the fast one. That's the lightest weight one. That is one of the very few subcompact crossovers that you can get with over 300 pound-feet of torque, and that's even on 87 octane. Basically, each of these have a lot of strong points, a lot of reasons to really consider one, and I like them both a lot for a lot of reasons. I'm thrilled that Mazda makes these. I'm glad that these are both in their first generation, and right off the bat, they are kicking some serious butt. But anyways, guys, if I fumbled in wording, it is in the 30 and 40 degree range today, so correct any, any issues you found down below. Mention your thoughts and opinions as well. Like this video if you got anything out of it. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to watch individual reviews of those, I usually catch more of the, the, the wording issues in those than I do in these one-take side-by-side comparisons. And huge thanks to Goody Motors, so check them out. I will link them below. Otherwise, I wish you guys the best. I hope you take care, and until next time, see ya.